Disclaimer, classes in Trove are built very much the same, so if you have watched any of my other build guides, then there is quite a lot of things that will repeat itself, but you can bypass those parts by the timestamps in the description. Also, my guides are always updated, so if I was to stop doing YouTube, all my those guides would go away. No misinformation will be out there, and I will always update my videos slash guides. If something major happens to the game content, if something minor changes, it will be in the description. Hello guys! who here back on the video this time around we are doing a build guide for bard yeah so the intro is going to be very much the same as if you've seen it before you can skip ahead to maybe the demo or something else but yes the intro is going to be different just with the which class we are going to do basically just telling you if this is your first time watching one of these build guides what you can expect from the video so as you can see right here i did make it into chapters also indicated by uh, timestamps which is in the description or on the video and first we are going to start with a five minute demo just showcasing the class what abilities do it have kind of just showing off not going into detail what they basically do but just showing them off and maybe that will interest you at making one of these classes one of your mains after that we are going to do a quick look at overall stats for the every single class so for this class that you're watching right here we're going to do it for that one and also in general we are going to talk about stats for example like crit hit and crit damage that's going to be some generalization right there and then we are going to move into gear and everything there's on the gear page that is of course banners, allies, head, face, weapon <laughs> and also rings and food, emblems, flasks, so on, so on. Everything there is in the gear uh, page, we are going to go over that one as well. Then we are going to cover gems. Mostly we're going to cover the empowered gems, of course. We're also going to talk a little bit about the smaller ones, but mostly we are going to go into the big empowered ones, or the big gems, that is. And then for lastly, of course, as you can see right here on the screen, we're also going to talk about the star chart or the talent tree, as I basically call it. So that's what the intro was all about, just letting you know what the chapters are and how it is going to work with the timestamp. So you can skip ahead if there's something you already watched. You can skip ahead to doing that, or you can basically uh, watch it all if you feel like you want to do that. But that was the intro, now we can jump into the demo.
All right, guys, let's take a deeper dive into the BART. We are going to start out by kind of explaining all the abilities because we did just see the demo. So I just wanted to get more deeply into how those all work because it is kind of a little bit funky. So I just wanted to make sure you guys know all of that and then we'll continue doing all that. But starting out, the BART, as we can see here, it's all about, of course, something playing some songs. And we're going to start out by the passive and the passive basically ties into the ultimate it's all about the ultimate basically so that's the most most important thing the other two is pretty easy pretty simple to do the mouse button two or the second ability is that uh, basically what the passive says just to clarify that it's just uh, you know when you do have your ultimate up running you can have it up all the time that will do more uh, damage uh, also i want to do say with this as well the clash gym is absolutely necessary for uh, this one because it does increase that you can go out without it but then you won't be like doing the most damage you actually can and if it's not your main you can actually opt out of getting this one but if you suddenly want to use it you don't have it you know but you could have it live in your stash and have it like that but i would just equip it if i was you because you're going to use it as your thing or as your uh, main character or just using it at in general so again the mouse button two is nimble dance and basically just what it does is that it does a little backflip here costs you some energy of course and also gives you a shield doing that so it's a little backflip here uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit uh, longer when you actually are moving, you know, uh, when you move backwards, it is going to be a little bit, a little bit longer, but it is a little bit of a backflip. That's really all it does. Uh, so it's just a backflip and uh, you get that shield as well. So for the number one ability for the star, it does also tie into the ultimate, which I will talk about a little bit uh, in, a, in, a, in a second, of course. But what it is, it just puts down this one and then you actually activate it and that makes a bomb. That's what it does. So again, you put it down and anything that is in this range and you can then use it again and it does explode like a bomb. But it does some interesting stuff when you actually use the ultimate. So the ultimate is where you are going to play your songs. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more here because you can just see sort of the ring that's going to be around us by me activating the ultimate. As you can see right here. Uh, I do have the ultimate around me and it wants me to do stuff in the little icon right here. And this is the timer I have to kind of pump it up and it changes for doing different things. So right now it wants me to use this one. Then it, uh, in, it I use this one again and you have to activate this one. You can see then the bar here does go up at right here. So if I do use it, if I use it right here, it is going to give me these aura. So basically you basically go through the different auras as you go through them. So you rotate through them. As you can see here, I'm just going to, now we are starting with a green one. So now it wants me to do a little jump here. Now it wants me to use this one. Uh, now it wants me to auto attack. That's auto attacking that one, more auto attacking. That's a little icon there. Now it wants me to use it again. Uh, it wants me to ju uh, do a little flip and it wants me to use this one again. Want me to auto attack. And it wants me to do the backflip and it wants me to auto attack. So you can see now here from the whole bar, this is the different ones. There's a green one, there's a blue one, and there's a purple one and there's a red one. And the red one is the one that is going to give you extra damage. As you can see now, I have the aura around me. So it affecting me, but it's also affecting people that are going to be in this area here. And the thing is, you can use this one and place it down there and you can then uh, use it. Uh, let me just use it again. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so if I want to use it, you can see I put down my my little thing there, and now I'm gonna just gonna use it. You can see there's becoming an aura around like me and also this one, so it can be basically bigger. Or if you are the boss, you can basically on the other side, so somebody can actually also be on the other side to receive this. So the more you go up in this, so you can you can kind of say, well, why would I go all the way up to the top here when I do also get the damage buff, for example, if you want the damage buff right here. Well, the more you go up this one, the more damage it's actually going to do. So it's very important to learn which ones comes from which one. So they're always going to be in the same, uh, you know, rotation. Basically, it's going to start with different ones, but it's always going to be the one that comes after the other one. So if we say they see now that it's green and it wants me to use this one, then the blue comes up. 
and then the backflip and then it's gonna be the red one and then it's gonna do the uh, the purple one and then when I do this it's gonna be a green again so it's always gonna be green blue red purple and then green but it could start at a different one so you do have to remember which one is gonna be up there because that kind of important when you get all the way to to the top because what is if it's not going to be the red one and you want the red one as the last one it's maybe the second last one then you have to remember that it's not a biggest of deals like you can like it, of course it's going to do more damage if you really want to min max but again the most important thing is just to get the red one and if you just want to get the red one down here then it's sort of uh, also cool so yeah and how you get up and again that's by using your different abilities to go up there but i just wanted to explain how that works because it's a little bit more complicated than it usually is but that's all there is really to it uh, as well but again the class gym does in, in uh, enhance all of that with the ultimate so i do in, uh, say that you should probably get that one but i don't want to talk too much about the abilities i already ran it already too much about it it's pretty simple when you first get into it but it could be a little bit difficult if you don't know what it like basically means all of the icons but you should just you know try them and you can see oh that actually increased it and that how it goes and again if you then want to use it uh, let me just uh if you want to use the blue one now again how to activate the circle is to hit the button again and that's what makes the circle it's kind of hard with the blue one right here but that's how it works and then it of course it resets and then you can go through them again and using all of the abilities i had to do that one i had to do that one uh i had to do that one again uh i have to auto attack and then you can see and then i have to use it again uh to activate uh the circle again so basically just that how you activate it you kind of go through them like kind of kind of scrolling through them to the ability you want and then the, you find the one you want and then you activate it again and then you are going to have it again and you can keep keep kind of going through them and just kind of yeah and the timer is pretty long as well but that was the uh, abilities uh, play around with it and just kind of learn how it kind of works it is kind of cool it's a very nice support uh bart is the best support we do have in the game but there's not really a foundation for a support i hope that we're gonna get that in the future because that'd be super cool if the bard got more, like, more love it's a very nice class it can do great damage as well and also kind of be kind of speedy uh, not so much compared to some of the other classes that we do have for speed and for boss killing and for farming in my opinion but the bard is not bad at all uh, I just feel like there's some other classes that just usually do it a little bit better in my opinion. But the Bart is definitely not bad. But I wish there was a foundation for the Bart to be a great support. Because it is a really great support that the uh, if you really know what to do with the ultimate and stuff like that. You can help a lot of people and dish out a lot of damage for this one as well. But let's go through our uh, stats that we do have which is right here so let's talk about it so uh it's a little bit different a little bit a fun thing is that your fist weapon is actually with i unequip it you can see right here uh actually i can't because it's still on the same class so let me just go over to the dino tamer it should have and done that now you can see that it actually gives physical damage yes it uses fists just like the vanguardian does but when you then switch to the uh bard again you can see right here if when i don't hover over it it's gonna be magic damage and because it is a magic damage user uh so physical damage does not work for it and it does convert the fist to being a magic damage instead of being physical damage so yes magic damage user uh, you kind of want a little bit of energy gen in there, but you are going to get that just by playing the game, you know, getting different dragons and such. So I wouldn't recommend you getting any energy gen on your gear because there's just some other stuff that is a lot much or a lot better in my opinion. And you're going to sacrifice some stuff for it, either movement speed or attack speed for energy regen. So, or maybe even crit hit if you're missing that. But when you get into the later game, in game, uh, and it, it, you know, you are going to have enough crit hit, but in the beginning, crit hit is pretty cool to have because you do need, of course, that 100%. So let's move down to 100%. Critical hit is necessary. I have 140%. That is way too much, but you know, I haven't min maxed my other character except for my Draconite. The only thing you have to worry about is to get too close to that 100%. It's a good to be a little bit over, like. Like one two percent that's fine uh you can also be one two percent under but i would just rather 
you know, be over 2% than under 2%. That's just my opinion, because then you get fully out of your crit damage, which you want as much as you can off, of course, and then uh, as much light as you can get as well. A really good place to get light. I just saw this in chat today when I was, you know, out there playing. Geode Mastery, get that to uh, 100, rank 100. That's a thousand flat uh, light to all your classes, and you don't have to worry about uh, well, you do have to get light some other places as well. You won't get to uh, almost 6,000 uh, getting down here, but it's just a good place to get it and you can get it in all your classes and it's just going to be permanent as well. So as much critical damage as you can, get crit hit to a 100% uh, as close as you can to it and then attack speed is pretty nice as well. You can also go with the movement speed, but again, movement speed is actually in the kit of the uh, you know of the part here so it, it there is a aura that actually do give you movement speed so you can actually you go speed but that actually also stacks with your normal movement speed so you could go more, more movement speed here if you want to use some other auras but again i wouldn't use this character as a speed character is i feel like there's again some other classes that do that does it very much better if i could actually speak so i would go with attack speed for this one here or movement speed again if you get movement speed on your gear it doesn't really i wouldn't change it too much except if you keep getting you know if you get that crystal four and it does have movement speed of course you can always change it when you get to second stat reroll week and all that stuff but i would just keep it as movement speed if you have it like that but if you, all your three pieces has movement speed i would probably kind of look into getting some more attack speed you do also get attack speed from some dragons and you don't get movement speed from any dragons of course you can just hop on a dragon and that will give you movement speed but you won't get any passively like you do for a tank speed so keep that in mind as well so that's why i'm saying movement speed is not terrible here even though i would go with attack speed to actually also make more damage as well but that's for our stats let's jump into the first our gear and that's going to be our hat as you can see here i went with critical damage and attack speed the magic find you can do whatever you want with the third stat there. There's not really a great option there. Uh, you can also go with some flat health if you want to get a little bit more health, but we are using death defying, which we'll get into a little bit here. But yeah, the critical damage is the necessary. Doesn't You can go again with some attack speed or some movement speed. It's really up to you, but the critical damage is like, that's mandatory. You need to have that. And then the magic find, and attack speed is really up to you, especially the magic find is really up to you. Then we, of course, we got our fist and I went again with the critical damage and the magic find and the attack speed. Here you could also go, instead of the magic find, you could actually also go some critical hit. If you are trying to min max the 100% uh, that you need, of course, for the the, the perfect uh, critical hit, right? So you can also go here, but since you saw 140, I, I don't need any more critical hits, so I went with some magic vine here, but again, it's optional for you. Again, the only the critical on, only critical stat is the critical damage. That was kind of uh, kind of pun, I guess, but the only thing you need here, again, critical damage as well. As we go into our face, there is two that's actually mandatory here. You can say, well, it looks very much the same, and it probably kind of is, again, the critical damage, but here the magic damage is necessary. I wish, again, they would change the hats at least to also include magic damage or physical damage for other characters because the third stat on this one, or actually the fourth stat is actually the magic find here is kind of dead. Yes, you do get some magic find and that helps you out in a way, but in the end, it doesn't really do much, the 140. Uh, I would just rather have some uh, magic damage as we do have on our face, but again, these ones, the critical damage and the magic damage on your face is absolutely mandatory. And then, of course, the attack speed is up to you what you want. Again, I went with the attack speed here. So uh, that was our uh, our gear up here. Let's jump down to our ring. And you want to get a magic damage ring here. And I went with the magic find on this one. But you could go something else. Again, you can also get critical hit here to kind of min-max around that 100%. So just giving you some option to know where you can get some critical hit. If you're way over, then, of course get away from critical hit and when you do go into i do only have uh, stellar gems but when you get into crystal you get an insane amount of uh, critical hit if you have it on all your gems like i have which i will of course talk about when we get to that tab but magic damage 
uh, is necessary and also again the light the third step don't matter too much in this case for the part so you just want to get a ring that's as high as possible so if you get for example a crystal four ring just use that one as long as it has magic damage and of course it's always going to have light on it but don't worry too much about the uh, third stat on the ring just get as high as you can and a, a three is better of course than two and if you just only have a level one as i have it's also going to be fine enough for our banner, you don't want to use this one, this dandrel here. Uh, you want to use, of course, the U10 banner, and you want to get the one with a match damage on it, and then also there's going to be light on it. So those two stats are always going to be on it. It's more the third and the fourth stat on them, and it doesn't really matter which ones you are. It's only a little increase. I like the one where you get on the other you know more flash charges but you can use whatever you want for your banner doesn't really matter as long as it's just is a u10 a banner but you can get away with getting one of these like 300 light is better than nothing the other one has a lot more uh, as a u10 banner but uh, right now you should just you know get whatever banner you can get here increasing your light is just uh, very nice uh, but you should get a level uh, u10 banner and then also uh, make sure that it, you craft it with uh, magic damage on it and and then you can do whatever you want with the third and fourth stat if that's what then we got of course our ally and our ally we are going with the urchin and the urchin is because of the light and the magic damage you can also go with the i know my big face is here in the here uh, let me see if i can't find it Oh yeah, it's up here. Uh, you can also go with the Starry Sky Fire, but that's a little bit harder to come by. You can basically see uh, right here out in the edge here, you can see it's kind of grayed out. It's because I don't have it yet either, because the star chart is huge and we need to get through all of it. And I went for, you know, actually stats instead of just going for all the allies. So I could do that as well. I will that at some point, but I'm just saying this is a little, you could do that with your star chart as well if you want to do that, unlocking that that way. But uh, we don't really need any cooldown reduction, uh, but if you have this one, you can use this one. If you have this one, I would actually go with this one here because, it, first of all, it's a lot easier to get. And also, it does give you that movement speed uh, when there is enemies that die next to you. And we don't need a cooldown reduction uh, at all, really. It doesn't do anything for our ultimate or any of our abilities, really. Of course, you can say that there's a little cooldown on the backflip here. But as you can see here, the backflip is almost ready again uh, when the duration is over here. But if you did use that one, you could probably have it up all the time, but it's not really necessary. Uh, I would rather have the movement speed. And you can see the what reason why we're also mostly taking is because of the light and they have the same light and the same magic damage, of course. So the only thing that really changes is, of course, the speed, uh, the recovery speed there, the, the, the orange text there. But also it's very significant that the origin is way easier to get. Uh, when you then start getting into, of course, having some max characters and getting some uh, Paragon ones as well. But you should go with the star one uh, if you uh, don't have the other one. But Orchin is probably going to the one you're going to have before you have this one, I would guess. But if, yeah, it doesn't matter. Use the one you want. The, the main thing we're going for is, of course, the light and the magic damage as well. Now let's talk about Flask. We were talking before about uh, Death Defying. So uh, we are going to use the Death Defying because it's just so much easier and you can get it from the store. It's just right there. It's in-game currency. It's just so easy to get and you get a nice amount of uh, flash charges and also you have that not dying uh, part as well. So when you are going to probably, it was supposed to die, you know, this is going to use it automatically. So when you run out of flash charges, if you are going to die, there is a few mechanics that can kill you, like there is a Leviathan that can actually uh, do a one-shot mechanic, and also, you know, the uh, Thought of the Moon and the Shadow Towers, we really don't do that anymore, but that also has a one-shot mechanic that override this one, and you can also, it can also bug out and not charge. I have happened to me a couple of times, not very often, thank God for that, but it, it has happened a few times as well. Uh, but if you don't have access to Death Define, you can use any flash you really want. You can also use some that gives you, you know, some uh, random and, uh, and you dodge and stuff like that. And also there's one that triggers when you're, uh, you know, you, you cover your magic find, but you need a, quite a lot of magic find for it to be stable. And then on the other hand, you also have to use it manually. So uh, you can also use the Death Define manually. It doesn't, it doesn't say you can't do that, but it will... Uh, trigger uh, automatically so it's just nice if you got some you know uh opposed to put you know random projectiles that are going to hit you and suddenly you're just dead or whatever so just keep that in mind that death defying is just awesome amazing 
Uh, but other than that, you can go with any flash you kind of want. There's also one that recovers a charge when you do a critical hit. So even though you have, if you have 100% or over, all your hits are crits, then this will not give you a charge every single time. So just keep that in mind. This only has a chance. It's quite a low chance even having a 100% crit hit. But I would just go with the death defying. Uh, not really much more to say, but more interesting is, of course, the emblems. Emblems are a lot more uh, interesting, except, for, of course, for the mandatory ones. If you've seen any of my other build guides, I always say this one. We need the arcane one or the martial one. A martial one is, of course, for physical damage users, and the arcane one is, of course, for magic damage users. And this is mandatory for every single class to use this one or this one. Not only because it's easy to get, because you get it in the store, again, from in-game currency, but it, the 250% is just absolutely insane. You can see I have about, I would say, 300, 400,000 magic damage. When I go ahead and use this one, I almost hit a million uh, magic damage for this one. It's only going to be for those three seconds, but three seconds is also a lot in trove. So, yeah. I would go, and if you have a bunch of flash charges that I kind of have, you would definitely go with that one as well. So Arcane one is absolutely mandatory for this one here. And of course, Marshall, if you were a physical damage one, then you can go with basically anything you want here. Some people would like to go with some of the allies. I feel the, like the allies is 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 better for bosses because bosses is around a little bit more but it tends to at least in my opinion that they don't really get to do anything when you're just farming dungeons and you pop a potion and then you just destroy everything and then you, your allies doesn't really do, get to do anything so i don't really like that one uh you can use the sure strike one if you're not 100 percent crit hit and you had like gotten everywhere you can and you're kind of lacking all that you can get the sure strike one it's a little bit harder to get it's not in very impossible at all but it's a little bit it, it's not super hard you can get the fragment but it's gonna cost you a little bit but the sure strike one i would not go with the sure strike one if you have access to other emblems and even if you're not there i would just equip something else but i do want to mention it that you can get to a hundred percent crit hit if you are rocking this one here, uh, if you are, of course, around that 80%, then this will give you the rest of the way up there. But I'm using, as you can see here, the Bountiful one. And I kind of want to do kind of a promotion, I guess you can call it, for Bountiful Emblem. Because it does have a chance to not consume a charge. And flash charges are really, as we talked about before, kind of important because you get that arcane one to proc so it does work here uh, for when it automatically uses uh, the death defying it has a chance of not consuming and i feel like the chance is pretty high it's not like the one we talked about the vial before or the flask before it's it kind of is a feel like it's kind of a high percentage as well of course if you'd only have like five charges it's not going to probably proc in that five charges but the point is it can be proccing on self-use and also on automatic use. And when self-use is, of course, when you use yourself, your 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 this one here, it does have a chance of not proccing one. And I, I pressed it so many times so fast that I didn't really see if it actually worked on any of these one. But I do like the bountiful one to actually have a chance of this one. Also because I don't really like the allies too much. Um, and I don't feel like some of them kind of disable some of your abilities, like, for example, uh, the Berserking, for example, that sends you into a frenzy. So you get more attack speed and movement speed, which is nice, but it only forces you, as you can see here, to use your main attack. So if you're actually reliant on using many of your abilities, you're actually not going to have access to any of these in the ability uh, in duration that it's going to be up. Uh, I'm not sure how long the duration is, but... It, I would not really use it. There is the unwielding as well, where you don't take a like a brief invulnerability shield, but that's just mostly if you feel like you take too much damage, you can switch to over to this one. But yeah, I kind of want to promote the bountiful when you are uh, using, especially when you're using the death define, because that's kind of your safety. So unwielding would be extra safety, which I don't really feel like is necessary. And we only have really have one slot to use something in because you know we have you have to use the arcane or the martial one so maybe if i had a third slot i would maybe use the maybe i would use the unwielding actually you know i would use that one or the vampiric maybe i could also use that one or one of the allies would be something as well some of the energy re regen a full energy thing is not really what we're going to use if you do want to go a little bit faster or jump a little higher or well yeah, jump a little bit more, you are going to use the trailblazing, but that's again more for the speedy boys out there. But that kind of covers all of the gear. 
but we're not really done yet. We do need to also talk about our gems. And we talked about it before. We talked about, of course, our class gem. The class gem is absolutely necessary. If it's going to be a class, you're going to use a bunch. If it's not, then I would maybe not take it, but that's really up to you. If you do have some, there's not really any great options other than the, the, the class one. So I would just get the class one, but it's really up to you. I don't want to, uh, you know, bind you and say you absolutely have to get it because it can be done without it. But I think it's just a good idea to get it or at least have a, a powered one up uh, when you are, uh, you know, lying around in your staff. If you want, if you have room for it, uh, that is the matter. Then you kind of want to go with the explosive. Explosive is amazing. Uh, I do also have the pyro disc and I want to recommend the pyro disc because you are sort of going to be in that range because um, you can, you can, the, the, the attack range is okay. And also it does become uh, bigger or longer uh, when you do have the, uh, you know, class gem. So if you don't have the class gem, I definitely want the pyro disc, but it, the, the attack range is not that far. It's right up there. It's not going to be enough for, if you can see, uh, the pyro disc is probably going to be half of that. So you're still going to be sort of not completely in their face if you're going full, like completely in range, but you usually, you know, enemies are going to, you know, get that gap between you. So you might as well have the pyro disc. And also it does give you movement speed as well. Not so much for the damage, but it's mostly for the movement speed that you do get from it. And you're going to be that any damage is great. So that little damage is going to help as well. But the explosive is amazing as well, because of course that it does explode enemies. And that, of course, can change some chain reactions that you want to get as well. Then we have all light. We want the Berserking Battler. Berser Berserking Battler is mandatory in this one as well because we are relying on attack speed. Uh, and this is just going to give us a nice uh, attack speed, but mostly also the light you get from this. This is why it becomes more mandatory. It's because decrease of the light. You can also go with the Vampiric if you want to do so. If you want to farm a little bit more and, and heal, heal up. But there is healing in included in your kit so you can actually just go from that or use your flask if you have a bunch of those so yeah it really don't and um, would go anything beside the berserking battler because maybe at some point you want to use the bard and you don't really have set it up so it's really nice to to do have the right gems on it if you know uh, if you know you are going to do so and right here with this one you want to go with critical damage and magic damage of course and then you want to put all your extra boosts into a light i've talked about this a bunch of times and it's also finding videos but you get boost at level 5 10 and 15 and those you can rearrange in the gem forge and you want to put it all into light and same thing with the other ones here critical damage magic damage and all the boosts into light because it's very important to get as much light as you can and you can change that up. It's going to give you a little bit in the end, but it's not going to be insane increases, but it is going to be decent increases, uh, definitely. And all your other gems, you just want to go with, uh, you know, magic damage, uh, magic damage, critical damage and critical hit. You just want to go with that with all of them. And you are going to end up, as you can see, with a lot more critical hit at your need. But you, I wouldn't change it around until you get crystal gems, maxed out crystal gems. That's where you want to kind of take off the critical hit. And also when your all your gems are perfect, uh, that's where you want to play around with how much you actually need to take out for the critical hit. So when you are having a class just like mine and you are getting to here and now you are next step is to get into the crystal gems if you don't have them. If you already have a full crystal gems, amazing, just go ahead. But when you do have maxed them all out, uh, there, but that's where you want to look into getting some more, uh, you know, get a rating of some critical hit, especially also on your gear if you have it there or if you have it on your gems, maybe you want to switch it out for some max health, flat max health or max health percentage. It's not a great options, but it's better than having a lot more critical hit. Um, critical hit is fine. If you want to keep it, if you want it, it's not going to hurt you in any way to have too much critical hit. Uh, but it is min max wise a little bit better to have more health even though we have the death defying then it's going to help a little bit there because the last 40 percent as we're talking about here it's not going to help you anyway the health is not going to help you a ton but it is going to be better than the uh, critical uh, hit 40 percent over that i am on here so if i was to max these out uh, all these gems here uh, of course for these ones uh, i don't get the critical hit on them of course but 
uh, there's not just not many options. If I could get jumps, I would get jumps in, instead of critical hit, actually. Also, instead of uh, max health, I would get movement speed. I would also get that. I would, if you got attack speed, I would get that as well. I'll probably get movement speed over attack speed because I do have a lot of attack speed. But the point is, I would take anything else than max health percentage and flat max health instead of the critical hit. But yeah. Uh, now it's just kind of dead in that waters, if you can say it like that, the critical hit because I'm way over. So I kind of wanted to put it in. You can see this one is actually moved into that one as well because yeah, might as well put it in there as well. But that's only for when you are going to the in-game or you're going to the crystal stage because then you know exactly how much you need to switch around. If you try to do it before, you might end up having too little and then you have to go back and yeah. So just do it whenever it's uh, kind of maxed out and just go with that. So look to that and doesn't matter too much until you get to the very end game. But we are of course not done because we do need a little bit more to talk about. And that's of course the magic damage star chart. And that's coming up right here. All right, first up, we got the magic damage tree. I sort of gave them all names and this is the magic damage path, as I call it. And out here is where there's red circles. This is where there is going to be some you might want to get really, you know, those that you really want to go for. The green ones are OK, but kind of there's not really anything between them. There is a little bit down here, but there's really nothing between them. These two over here are red because uh, there's two great good notes over here and could be a path that you want to go after you go through the basically the magic damage part and then also the critical damage part as well. And you really want to go down here because there's also like a 15 damage right down here in the bottom. If you can see it right down there, there's a 15% magic damage winch is pretty crazy as well because you do have to go out either this way or this way after. Uh, over here is the uh, magic find and the kind of the uh, magic find an XP path and uh, that's okay as well. Uh, you do need those, you know, XP for if you're leveling up or doing Paragon and stuff like that. But the red ones are sort of mandatory for a uh, magic damage. You can go whatever you want if you want to do so, but uh, these are definitely the note that increases and has some impact as a magic damage user. So as you can see, you can you can also pause the video if you want to and just kind of check all the things out if you want to do so, which ones are you going to go for and which ones are pretty nice to have, but it's not really a lot of good notes leading up to it. So if you had, let's say you had, you could get all the notes or at least everything, all the green ones and all the red ones, then you should definitely also go for the green ones as well. The green one up here has some magic, not sorry, magic attack speed. That's why it's up here. Usually not many, uh, you know, uh, magic damage users, like for example, Dragonlight don't use, uh, you know, attack speed, but like a Gunslinger or is Ice Age, for example, does use it. So that's why it's up here, but there might be some a little bit better notes down here. And if you, I'd rather have 15% magic damage than like a little bit of attack speed because it's not really a lot of attack speed you get out of this note here. And there's some good ones in between as well if you want to get those as well. Um, but basically you want to go through all of the magic. So yeah, this is the damage, uh, magic damage part if you can say it like that. But this is what I think at least you should be aware of these notes. That's it for the video. Click the video on screen that's coming up right now. YouTube thinks you might like it. Also check out the description for all my ultimate guides that goes into more specific things in Trove. And also hit that like button would help me out very, very much. Also consider subscribing and that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.